Adam here and I'm going to talk to you about the Royal Enfield Classic 500 in Battle Green that I recently purchased. It's not your ordinary review because there's lots of those out there on the internet. I thought I'd show you what it's like to own it in the initial stages and see what I found which might help you if you're deciding or not to buy one. The bike is a tribute to the war era, 500cc single cylinder. It's got 1950s styling mainly around the headlight and the toolboxes painted in a matte finish and it's got painted wheels as well. I bought the bike here in Spain second hand with 10,000 kilometres on the clock. New price is about £4,500 which equates to about €5,200. The reasons why I bought the bike in the first place are probably very similar to yours. It's looks. Fantastic. Royal Enfield history. I do like that. Even though I prefer a Triumph. But they're too expensive. Simple and basic to maintain. Yes, it's got an injection engine, but the rest of it is very simple and straightforward. And that makes it ideal for using here in Spain, where things are occasionally difficult to get hold of. Let's have a look around the bike. The bike is full of charm and certainly is a real head turner, especially here in Spain. You get a lot of attention wherever you go. I have found that it is a very comfortable ride. It's got adjustable gas shocks on the back, which I know is fairly average these days. But in addition, you've got the sprung seat for the person at the front, at least. Obviously not for the person at the back. The bike comes without the pillion seat, which is about £150, but was on this bike when I bought it, along with a lot of other extras, fortunately for me. So it was quite a good deal. It's also got two stands. The large stand, as it is on now, and also a chrome side stand, which is on the other side. So you've got two stands. So, right, so the extras on the bike when I bought it, it's got a reverse cone exhaust system which is an aftermarket, about £55 and makes it sound really nice. The original exhaust system, which you'll probably see on some other photos, is much longer and I much prefer this. It looks better, sounds better. I put some exhaust wrap on the front just to make it look cool, no other reason at all. The handlebars are an addition, they are trial style handlebars and I prefer the position to the original bars. Easy to change, just have to drill two holes and I prefer the position, that's the only reason. These were about £33. The bike was already fitted with Pirelli Scorpion tyres when I got it which were much better than the ones that come out of the factory. I've removed the stickers on the side here, which was Classic 500, again, just personal taste. And I've also removed the indicators, again, personal taste, very easy to do. They'll have to go back on for the Spanish version of the MOT, as will the original exhaust system. They're very strict out here on having an original spec. The fuel tank holds 14 litres, which will give you about 300 kilometres travel with a single person that comes down to about 280 if there's the pillion on the back as well i've just put 14 liters on the top there just to remind me while i get used to the bike nearly all the extras on the bike were bought from a company in the uk called hitchcocks and i'll show you uh, how to get hold of them later on they uh sent them out here to me as well at a very reasonable cost but that's a very good source of stuff for royal enfield problems I've found are basically the build quality and it's mainly things like the lock or the locks on the toolboxes again they don't fit very very well so that's a bit annoying but you soon get used to it the cold start is a little bit of a problem it has got a fast idle and I've used a hairband to hold that on because unfortunately otherwise you have to stand there and hold it in the on position while it warms up. The fuel indicator is extremely basic. It tells you when you've got about three litres left and nothing in between. You should never allow it to get down to there because you're in danger of running the fuel pump dry. So it's all, this is why I've put the uh, mileage, the kilometres on there so I know when it's getting near to it so I can fill it up in good time because the fuel gauge is so basic. Vibration is known to be a problem with this bike. Anything over 50 kilometers per hour in my experience absolutely fine i don't go any faster than that anyway and it's definitely not one 
a bike to sit on the motorway. It's definitely for cruising around. Very comfortable at that, and that's what it's about, nothing else. The kickstart is supposed to be quite difficult to get to work. I've used it once and it worked absolutely fine and I think it's just about putting the kickstart in the right position to get the right compression point. Otherwise, you do have problems, I'm led to believe, but as in my experience, it was okay. I only needed it once when I left the ignition on and the battery went flat over two hours. I found the throttle quite jerky. Uh, mainly when I've got someone on the back, but I must admit it does seem to snatch, but it might just be my bike, I'm not sure, because I've not read anything else about that from anybody else. Consequently, as I mentioned, it's a cruising bike, not good in traffic, although it's absolutely fine. Obviously in traffic, you're on and off the throttle all the time, which can be jerky. They recommend that you check the nuts and the bolts are tight every few weeks. I uh, haven't done it yet and I've had it a couple of months but I do intend to but due to the vibration they are prone to slacken off. One of the most annoying things about the bike is the breathing hole underneath the fuel filler cap which obviously allows air in when the fuel's being sucked out the bottom. However, it sits in the bottom of a dip under the fuel cap. So guess what when it rains it fills the tank with water. I only found this out by going out one day after a rainstorm and the bike spluttering for a good five minutes. Thought it was a serious problem till I got home and checked the internet and found out what it was. Soon cleared that problem and I haven't had it occur since so I'm more conscious about keeping water out of that area uh, and it quite quickly sucked the water through without causing any damage, hopefully. The new model from Royal Enfield on this bike is with the addition of ABS and also has a rear disc brake. Two things that I haven't noticed are a problem, but obviously would be an improvement uh, for the general well-being of the bike. These black rubber things are interesting. When I first initially looked on the internet about them, there was quite a lot of detail about technical stuff. And as I delved deeper, it became more apparent that it was a lot more simple than that. They are there to reduce vibration of the fins and consequently to reduce noise to keep within the current legislation regarding noise emissions. So that's all they are. They're simple baffles to reduce vibration and consequently noise. They can be removed. Some people have removed them. I'm quite happy with them. And when they've been removed, there's no detrimental effect that's been reported. Uh, but I've left them on because I'm quite happy with them. But if they fall off, it's obviously nothing to really worry about. Okay, thanks very much, Adam. Well, that's your lot. Hope it's been of some use. And to summarise, great bike, great fun, great for weekend cruising. A bit limited if it's for everyday use. Bye now.